And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and today we're taking a look at 5 Minute Mystery. Now this is the third in the series. We had 5 Minute Dungeon and 5 Minute Marvel, uh, which were very similar to the same games. In those games, you were fighting different monsters um, in the dungeon and then different villains in Marvel and everyone's using cards together, trying to beat as many as they could in 5 minutes. In 5 Minute Mystery, you are working together, but this is a very different game of deduction. You're trying to figure out who done it out of a pool of suspects using logic and deduction and speed and observation. Here's how it works. Now, you can play through various different missions when you're playing Five Minute Mystery. And you'll take these cards and pick one of them, and you'll see there's little uh, tags in the corner that tell you how difficult it is, how long you have. But the base game itself is a five minute game. You use a five minute timer. And in this game, you're going to take this pile of culprits here, and you're going to pick one randomly and put it in the middle. That is the person who did, who, who done it, who robbed from the museum. You're going to then take suspect cards, and you have a pile of suspect cards showing the various people who might have been able to do it. And these are going to be split between everybody so that each person has their own hand of suspect cards. And together, we're going to be narrowing them down. Now, this is done by starting the timer. One person is given this codex, and this codex has multiple symbols on it that you'll be spinning around. Players are going to turn over the, uh, the, the deck here, and you'll take a look at the top card of the deck. And everybody is looking for symbols on here that are going to match that. You'll notice here on the reference card, there are multiple symbols, squares, triangles, circles, crosses, and stars. And there's only one of each. So there, for example, is the cross on this particular one. And it would be the top one. So you need to alert the person with the codex to that. And they'll turn the codex so that that's showing at the top. When you think you have all the symbols, you'll turn it over to see if it matches. This is a match at all. But if it doesn't match at all, you draw another card and keep going until you get a match. But once you do have a match, you are going to pick one of the different characteristics. There are four characteristics here. So let's say we pick the blue one. You're then going to turn the blue one over and it says glasses. And you're going to look and see. You're going to put it up next to the culprit. If it matches, that means the culprit does have glasses. If it doesn't, that means that they don't have glasses. So then I'm going to start looking through all my cards to see which of them have glasses. So the blue one is going to be glasses, fan, gloves, monocle. So I look at all my cards and monocle, nothing, nothing, monocle, no monocle, nothing. So that didn't actually eliminate any of my suspects. But let's say we solved another clue, we turn it over, and here's monocle, we match it up. Well, lo and behold, monocle doesn't match either. So now, and everyone would do this together, I can get rid of that person because they have a monocle, and um, this person has a monocle, and this person has a monocle, and this person. Man, I just eliminated everyone but two of my cards. And then maybe later we draw the next one, and this is gloves. They don't have gloves either. And I look here, and Molly has gloves. And so does Isabella, so I've eliminated everyone from my hand. Now, as you put these out here, scales, we go, sometimes you will find a thing that matches. That's always good because you can narrow it down even faster that way. But what you're doing is you're going to continually do this till you've narrowed it down to one suspect. Once you've narrowed it down to one best suspect, you'll reveal the culprit, who in this case is Isaac. And if you're correct, you win the game. If you're wrong, you lose. And you can play multiple games of this. That's basically how it works. Now, do notice that there's different scenes here, but each of the scenes will have things differently. Like, for example, this scene has the, this is the same scene. I think there's four cards for each one. This one has the cross here. This one does not. This one has a triangle here. This one does not. They have stuff in different locations, so you won't be able to memorize them. And like I said, 
you have different cards here. So for example, here you just got to catch a culprit and you have nine minutes to do so. That's an easy one. While here, you need to find the symbols on seven different scenes, find the glasses, fur, and pocket watch clue tiles, and you do not need to, need to choose or catch a random culprit. There's all kinds of things in here. And in fact, you can throw in red herrings into each pile. So when you solve a clue, you turn it over and boom, nothing. So there's all kinds of ways to manipulate the game, but that's the basic way to play. When it comes to components, I love these scenes. They're great. You know, it has a real Where's Waldo style vibe to it. So much stuff in there. But you're looking for symbols. And I'll tell you what, sometimes the symbols seem obvious to one person, not others. That's why this game works well in a group. Like, I instantly notice that star there. But then I know I see the triangle there and the cross there. But now I'm like, uh, where's everything else? And it might take me a while before I finally figure out that the circle is there. But I like these art on the cards. I especially like the art on the suspects. I love this one, for example. Bruce the Bat is upside down, which I find to be amusing. Uh, you know, there's Nancy and Abigail. There's a good mix of different animals here. That's fun. Also, it's a, it's a little hard to tell maybe here on camera, but they made the background of each one what they are. So if you have scales um, or fur or feathers, you don't have to actually like try, oh, there's a turtle. What does it have? You just look at the background and see if the background matches. So that's nice. Everything's good quality. This codex itself is really good quality. And I'm, I'm very impressed with the production value here. I gotta say, I really enjoy how this game brings people together to work in cooperation, and for me specifically, as a family. Uh, the You know, I don't know that I'm a huge fan of Find the Symbols as fast as you can aspect of the game, but my kids really enjoyed that part. They liked it, and so we were working together to find the symbols, and that was a pretty neat thing. In fact, uh, that card is a big card, but I could see how on a big table you just give it to a few people and they shout out the things to the person with the codex. And we found that to be an enjoyable experience, but then once you do that, you then match the trait and everyone's looking through their hands at the same time. Everyone's working together. Everyone is involved. Even if you can't find the symbols, you can still look at your hand and say, oh, this person has glasses? Well, I'll get rid of the people who don't have glasses. It's a pretty simple concept, and you're just doing this in a speed methodology. Now, sometimes you need to find two different suspects, which is a really intriguing thing because you're matching the thing to two of them, and you definitely can ratchet up the difficulty level of this. It's base game, just playing five minutes, one suspect is, is, is achievable. I wouldn't say it's easy per se, but once you get good at the game, you're probably going to do that. But I love that those pictures are not memorizable, at least as far as I can tell. With four of each, you're never quite sure where anything's going to be, and you'll never remember what symbol it is anyway. Even if you remember where the circle is, is the circle with the point going up and over and the dots on both sides, and describing that to the person with the codex. I mean, the person with the codex is allowed to look at the card, but still, they're, they're relying on everyone else to help them. It just, I like games that give a real sense of camaraderie, teamwork, and I think this one does it. I think it's going to be good for families. I like it better than 5-Minute Dungeon and 5-Minute Marvel. I will say that this one in particular is a little more complex, maybe, but it teaches some basic deduction principles. It's the same as in, you know, Guess Who, for example. You're just e eliminating people based on whether they have a trait or not. But it also can ratchet that up a level with those different uh, case cards. And I think it allows you to kind of put the game at the level that your family's at. And again, I keep saying the word family because that's what I did this as. But it could work with any group of friends. This is a game I think that kids could play by themselves without adults. But I think that a group of adults could get together and play it too. Yes, it has a bit cute cartoony um, animal artwork here. But it is a solid game. And honestly, even though it uses deduction principles from other deduction games, and even though it has speed like so many other games do, it really is its own beast. There's nothing out there, I think, that comes close to what this is doing. So I'm very impressed with this one. I recommend you check it out. That's 5-Minute Mystery. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment approved!